This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Monday, June 27, and this is your Barbados Day afternoon update. So glad you could join us. I'm Kmar Jordan. A family of seven is today appealing for help after their Chapman Lane home was ravaged by fire at the weekend. 42 year old Diane Stewart says they've lost all their possessions and they're now forced to rely on relatives. She says they're in need of food and other basic supplies, but they would especially like help in rebuilding their home. Right now I'm asking for some help that I can get the house built back, some assistance, anybody that can help me, anything, a bring door, door, stove, anything. I would like some assistance that I can get the house built back that we all could be back home again. Attorney General, that's the Acting Attorney General, Minister of Transport Michael Lashley is concerned that the illegal drug trade is threatening the island's social fabric. As the National Council of Substance Abuse held a service yesterday to mark its 21st anniversary, Mr. Lashley says it's a worrying that Barbados's geographical position puts it at the center of a major transit point between South America and North America. He urged the National Council on Substance Abuse not to relax its fight. Like so many neighbors in the Caribbean region, too many of our drug problems experienced in Barbados today emanate from the trends in more modern developed parts of the world. These continue to negatively impact all socioeconomic age and gender segments of our population, together with the rapid changes in youth culture and access to social media. Significant challenges include, but are not limited, of course, to the, the proliferation of the number, quantity, and quality of drugs up there. That, if I had to mention them, obviously it would take the whole afternoon. But it's a fight, and the, and the council is working manfully and sticking manfully to the task of treating to this problem that is impacting on the social, economic, and moral fabric of this society. In, regard, in this regard, the National Council of Substance Abuse is, a con, is in a continuous fight to ensure that it maintains its relevance given Barbados' geographical location at the intersection of the major marijuana and cocaine consuming territories to the north and producing territories to the south of the Caribbean Basin. Dengue fever cases are on the rise. Word of this from the acting chief medical officer, Dr. Anton Bess. He is, however, reporting no increase in Zika cases, which is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. With regards to the statistics for Zika, we have not noticed any increase in the statistics of Zika. Um, we, however, have started to notice an increase of dengue cases for 2016 compared to the same period of 2020. Uh, 15 corresponding period for last year and what the Ministry of Health is doing in terms of prevention and control is to focus on the vectors the Aedes aegypti mosquito this is the same vector that is responsible for chikungunya it's the same vector that causes dengue and it's the same vector that causes Zika so our emphasis has been on educating the public about how they can help with vector control and the fogging that goes on to kill the, the, the breeding, the active mosquitoes, particularly the female, that the program continues. And while there's lingering concern about the effect of the Zika virus on pregnant women, Dr. Bess assures the island has not recorded any cases linked to the virus. We have had a few uh, pregnant women who have had Zika in the pregnancy. As far as I'm aware, there have been no untoward um, effects on the baby the children that have been born. So, we have so no, no cases of microcephaly attributed to Zika at this point. Sexual activity among school children in Barbados is high. And according to the United Nations champion for children, Faith Marshall Harris, it's not only prevalent at secondary schools, but it's growing at primary schools as well. Addressing the 62nd Annual General Meeting of the Barbados Family Planning Association at the Yacht Club over the weekend, the former magistrate blamed parents who she says are exposing their children to too much sexual activity. From my own experience on the bench and following that, my research in these matters, I posit the following factors. You may be able to add to these or you may not agree with all of them. 
But this is a short list that I draw of what leads to this early sexualization. I found that in dealing, say, in the juvenile court, and even in the family court where we were discussing maintenance access, that actually children are very often very much in the conversation and very sexually explicit conversation that takes place, uh, takes place among adults. One of the other concerns that I noted too when I was on the bench, that very often sexual activity took place in the presence of children. There's regional and international news after this short break. I love it. It's your girl Azizi, the Barbados City Crop Over Superstar 2015. The competition is even more exciting this year. There will be three champions. The public will choose their junior, soccer royale, and pickety crop champion. So here's how it works. Go to our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Barbados Today to fill out your competition form. Two, upload your video with your song to Barbados Today's Facebook page. Three, make sure you invite all your friends and family to vote for you. The contestant with the most votes by the end of their competition will be crowned champion. I gave me a sweetness. I know you like sweetness. All of this is sweetness. Continue now to Regional News, Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies tells the Caribbean it must stand together and avoid drifting apart as he warns the region to brace for the impact of the UK's decision to sever ties with the European Union. Sahiri Beckles stresses the region must not mirror this mentality of cultural and political insularity, but reaffirm the importance of regionalism. Noting that the Caribbean will be affected on virtually all fronts, including trade relations, immigration, tourism and foreign policy, he says the UWI will be hosting a symposium this week to discuss the implications of the UK move. For the field, the U.S. Supreme Court hands down a victory to abortion rights advocates, striking down a Texas law imposing strict regulations on abortion doctors and facilities. The ruling issued this morning found that the Republican-backed 2013 law placed an undue burden on women exercising their constitutional right to end a pregnancy established in the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. More now in the CNN report. But today the justices in a 5-3 decision said that those provisions put an undue burden on women. In fact, here's what the opinion said. It was written by Justice Breyer. Justice Kennedy joined the liberals in the opinion. It says both the admitting privileges and the surgical center requirements place a substantial obstacle in the path of women seeking a previous Pre-viability abortion constitute an undue burden on abortion access and thus violate the Constitution. So a huge win for abortion rights activists. They had argued all along that this law was a thinly veiled attempt to stop abortion in the state. They said that more risky procedures didn't require these same high standards, but advocates of the law said that this was all about women's safety and health and that there would be access to the 5.4 million women of reproductive age in the, in the state to these clinics within 150 miles. But as you hear, Jake, 5-3 decision, the high court striking down these two provisions in the law saying that they are unconstitutional. And that's news and sports at this hour, but for more you can log on to www.barbadosday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, or Screenplay in the supermarket or a gas station near you. You can also check us out on Channel 99, that's on Flow TV, or Mix. 
96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you on later on around 6 o'clock today.